Hey guys, Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to create a digital signage or video kiosk for your Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Now, another really good way to use a Raspberry Pi instead of having it to do projects or use as a desktop PC is digital signage. You might not even notice this, but a lot of companies use this already, especially like movie theaters or even restaurants that runs those menus on top. They use a Raspberry Pi for digital signage. And a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on build root, which is basically getting your Raspberry Pi to boot within five seconds. And I was actually going to expand on that video to turn it into a kiosk or into uh, something that would boot up into a web browser. Now, instead of reinventing the wheel, I decided to do some more research on this. And I already know that there is a couple of operating systems that does digital signage on the Raspberry Pi, but a lot of those require you to pay a subscription or pay some money just to download the operating system. Well, I found one called Total Technic and it's on GitHub. It's completely free and it works great. This is what you're seeing right now. Now, this originally was a video and then it only played once. I didn't have it loop and then it'll show my logo, but you can have video loop or you have it boot up into a web browser right into a URL of your choice. So there's a lot of things you could do with it. It does host its own web server inside. So if you wanted to have a, your own little website uh, host it locally, you could do that as well. So I'm going to show you guys how to get this installed and how to configure it so you could get it to the way you want it to. So I'm going to be leaving a link to everything we talked about in this video. And one of the things that I looked up was uh, Toto Technic. I don't know how to say it perfectly, but I'm pretty sure that's how you would say it. Um, another thing was my main purpose of this build was to get a teleprompter, if you remember on that last video, onto this little eight inch display. And I did find an open source version of a teleprompter which just runs a website. It's actually pretty impressive and I got this installed so I'll show you this in a little bit. And this was another company that I saw called Pi Signage. You can sign up for free. You can actually download the player and stuff like that but you, you do need a license after two players or something like that. So, And then uh, there's a few more that I, I didn't, I'm not even going to mention because it requires you to pay right off the bat to even grab the image. But let's talk about Total Technic for now and you can see uh, a couple of features it has, which they're pretty big. Uh, it's pre-built images, so you don't have to actually manually build it yourself. There's also a silent boot screen splash, which is pretty cool. It boots directly into either a full screen web browser or video with audio playback. Again, optionally boots into a full screen player, which is what we just talked about. And it uses OMX player, so you're going to get um, pretty good speed with playing that video. Uh, it runs a Node.js web server, which is like a very basic web server. You do have the ability to install bigger uh, web servers if you want to, like Apache or something like that. Uh, this is huge, which is HDMI CEC support. And this allows you, if you have a CEC TV support, your regular TV remote could actually control the functions of the Raspberry Pi through that TV remote. Uh, also have SSH enabled by default. Uh, wireless is supported. Now wireless is default and the ethernet is actually disabled and in order to enable it you have to go into settings and enable the ethernet itself. The device is also um, has UART so if you want to look at the boot up prompt and everything you can just plug it into the serial pins um, and then be able to read the initial boot up process. Uh, WPA launcher, keyboard and mouse support, nano text editor that's cool auto expands when you first put it in. So yeah, that's pretty good. MDNS, uh, which is pretty cool as well. You don't have to type in the actual IP address. If you don't know it, you can just type in Raspberry RPi 3.local. It's very slim. That is true. The download is only about 80 megabytes. It's zipped up. When it's extracted, it takes only 300 megabytes and it's running 4.9 and it's bare system with only 12 megabytes of RAM. Now, the only downside to this project, it only supports uh, Raspberry Pi 2, Raspberry Pi 3, and Raspberry Pi 0. So if you're looking for something like Raspberry Pi 4, and uh, this project will not support that. But again, it actually gives my use for Raspberry Pi 3 again, because I have a bunch of Raspberry Pi 3s and 0s that I could just use this project on. And what's cool, check this out. Raspberry Pi 3 boots up in 14 seconds. And if it's Raspberry Pi Zero, it's about 25 seconds, which is still very impressive if I'm just plugging it up. And that's basically about it as far as the details on installing this. Now, I'm going to copy this over using Imager. And I'm going to choose the OS, use custom, and it's called the SD card RP3 image, which I have. Choose storage. I have a little four gigabyte SD card in here. And yes, and I'm going to transfer this over. It doesn't take long. It's literally only transferring about 300 megabytes 
and that's about it. The first boot will take a little bit longer than usual because it is going to be booting into, you know, expanding the file system and everything. But other than that, it runs really quick. Okay, so here we go. Everything is copied over. But before I stick it into my Raspberry Pi, I am going to pop this SD card out, remount it, and... If you go down the list of over here, it'll actually give you more detailed explanations on what you need to do. But I'm just gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna open a file manager, pop over to the boot volume. And there are three files that you have to worry about. One, which is the WPA supplicant file and it's config and example. You would wanna rename this, get the example out, and then edit this file to what you need. So your SSID and your password, those are the things you need to uh, modify. Now, if you are planning to only show a URL, okay, then you leave this file here. So the URL right now, it's doing local host. And also if you're doing video, if you're gonna do video, uh, you would have to remove this file or just rename it to something and then it'll run their own video file. But because this file is here right now, all I have to do is just rename it. So I'm just gonna do RM and it will boot into the URL. And that's it. I'm gonna boot this up, show you guys what I'm talking about, and you'll see in a second. All right, so here we go. We have it booting up, and it has that little boot up splash screen, and also has a progress bar right on the bottom. Give this about, like we were saying, 14 to however many seconds, about 14 seconds, and this should go directly into their own web browser. And I'm gonna see if I can bring this closer to you guys. And as you can see, it actually says like you could use your remote control to go up and down. And on the bottom it has the URL. Now this is the default splash screen that it shows up in, in the beginning. Um, I don't really care for it because we don't really need this right now. But if I wanted to change the URL, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right here. So opening up the terminal, I could SSH root into rpi3.local and that's the name it gave it. And yes, I could do that because I have another one with the same IP in here, which is the same IP anyway. And I could log in as root. So in here, if I go into the boot folder, you're going to see the same files, URL, RM video. And yeah, that's basically it. So what I'm going to do is nano URL txt. In here, I am actually going to change to something I put up, which is that teleprompter website. So it's 192.168.105.116 is where I have that location. Now it doesn't auto refresh, so you do need to reboot, but since it only takes about a couple of seconds to do the whole thing, I don't mind rebooting this anytime I need to. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like, like here. And you can see it's booting up uh, with the progress bar on the bottom again, and it only takes a couple of seconds to do it. And it should pop right into the website that I have my teleprompter on. So come on, should be almost there. And there we have it. See, this is the teleprompter website that I'm currently using. Uh, I'm still using the base example, but it has all my words that I need on there and I could change the font size, scroll up and down. Uh, right now, the touchscreen, there's no touchscreen on this, but um, if you do want to use touchscreen, you would have to compile your own version with touchscreen enabled. But in most cases, if I am going to use this on a TV or something, I could just use the remote control to go up and down, or I could just hook up a mouse to it and wirelessly navigate to whatever I need. But uh, having this website up, this teleprompter website that I'll leave a link to it as well, allows me to edit the text anytime I want. And anytime I display it for my videos, I will have my new updated content for myself. Now, to do videos, it's pretty simple as well. Now, I'm going to go back into root, into that device. And again, head over to boot. And because we changed the file name to RM video, I'm going to move the RM video to video.txt and move the URL to RM URL. I'm just renaming it so it doesn't have the same name. So here we have now RM URL. I removed the URL and the video.txt is there. And I'm gonna nano video.txt and, and then add my, uh, upload my files to it. And yes, it does support SCP or SFTP. I already did that. Here I'm just gonna type root. That's where the location I have it. Intro 3.mp4, save this, reboot. And I'll show you guys what this is gonna do. So here we go, it just booted up. Doesn't need to run the web browser, so it boots up a little bit faster, I believe. And there is my intro. 
if this device had audio, it would also play the audio itself. But uh, yeah, there we have it. The intro, and it just runs in a loop, and you will see a longer black screen. That's just my intro. I actually have a big black bar in the front and in the back so I can edit it and stitch it together. But yeah, it actually will continuously loop. So if you got anything that has to play a video continuously, like showing some food or something in a restaurant, that's what you could do. Now in conclusion, um, I find this to be very, very useful, especially if you're doing anything that requires just hitting a web browser. So if you play like, say, a set of Corsa and you know there's dash panels that you could actually load up through the web browser, you could use this to do it. If you got digital signage that you need to put up for a restaurant or a, a, a place, you could use this as well. If you're doing a teleprompter, just need to like po point to another website that's running your teleprompter software, you could do this as well. Like this by far is very convenient and low powered. I'm powering everything just through one wire because the screen itself is low powered and the Raspberry Pi doesn't cost that much power on a Raspberry Pi 3. So all in all, it runs better than having to run an Android tablet. That's in my opinion. So yeah, that's it. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.